here. We want to verify the spectral theorem for real symmetric two by two matrices. Now, spectral theorem for real symmetric matrices says, if A is a real n by n matrix, A is also symmetric, so A equals A transpose, then the eigenvalues for A are real, and there exists an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors for A. So in other words, there exists an orthogonal matrix P, such that P inverse AP is equal to D, where D is a real diagonal matrix. So not only is A diagonalizable, which I mean we can put it in diagonal form, we can put it in diagonal form using an orthogonal matrix. Now, we're only interested in the two by two case here, so we'll let A be any real two by two symmetric matrix. So I'll have A and C on the diagonal, B is off the diagonal. We'll start by finding the characteristic polynomial. So I'll form the determinant of lambda I minus A. When we work that out, we get lambda squared minus A plus C lambda plus AC minus B squared. It's worth noting the coefficients here. The coefficient of lambda is minus the trace of A. The constant term is just the determinant of A. Now, if I want the eigenvalues, we're just going to find the roots of this polynomial. So I use the quadratic equation. We'll get lambda equal to a plus c, plus or minus square root of a plus c squared, minus 4ac, plus 4b squared, all over 2. If I want to simplify, okay, well, we'll split this into two terms. So we'll have a plus c over 2. Then over here, okay, a few steps. First, I'll expand the a plus c squared. Gives me a squared plus 2ac plus c squared. Combine that with the minus 4ac. That becomes a minus c squared. Now, if we push this 2 into the square root, we'll have a denominator of 4. For the a minus c squared, I could push that 4 in to the square as a minus c over 2 quantity squared. Then when that 4 hits this term, we're just going to have b squared by itself. So here we have our two roots. Now, note, we're taking the sum of two squares here. If we take any number and square it, we're going to get either 0 or a positive number. So if we're adding two numbers together that are either 0 or positive, we're going to get another number that's 0 or positive. So the square root is always going to be a legitimate operation. So that means the roots are always going to be real, and that's our first conclusion. Let's take a closer look at our eigenvalues. First, we want to know when we have an eigenvalue of multiplicity 2. That is, when does our characteristic polynomial have a double root? Now, that occurs when the square root is equal to 0, since we have a sum of two squares, that can only be equal to zero when each item that we're squaring is zero. So we'd have to have a equal to c and b equal to zero. If we put that together, that means our original matrix, a, is equal to a zero zero a. So the eigenvalues of a are the real numbers a with multiplicity two. For the orthonormal basis, we just use the standard basis, E1 and E2. If we conjugate A by P, which in this case would be the identity matrix, we get back A, which is our real diagonal matrix. Now, if the square root is non-zero, then these two roots are not going to be equal. So A will be diagonalizable. In this case, each eigenvalue produces a non-zero eigenvector. Those eigenvectors are going to be linearly independent, so we'll have a basis of eigenvectors, and that's what we need to be diagonalizable. By the spectral theorem, we can do better than that. So the first step is to show that those eigenvectors are actually orthogonal. Now, let's review what we have with the standard inner product on R2. So if A is symmetric, we have the standard inner product on R2. 
If I take the inner product of A times V with W, the way a matrix works with the inner product, we could push it to the other side by taking the transpose. But because we're symmetric, I'm allowed to remove the transpose. So if I have a symmetric matrix, I can move our matrix from one side to the other without a penalty. The result we're interested in, if I have a symmetric matrix, we have two non-zero eigenvectors, four distinct eigenvalues, then those eigenvectors are gonna be orthogonal. That is, if we take the inner product of V with W, then we get zero. Now, that's just following our nose and using this result. If we take the inner product of AV with W, well, A times V is gonna be lambda one times V because it's an eigenvector. And then I can pull the lambda one out in front. If I take inner product of AV with W again, instead we'll push the A to the other side as is because it's symmetric. Then I'll get lambda two W since W is an eigenvector and we can pull the lambda two out in front. Now, we can push everything to one side since these are equal. So we'll have lambda one minus lambda two times the inner product of V and W equals zero. This term out in front is non-zero because lambda one is not equal to lambda two. So we could cancel that off. What we're left with is that the inner product of V and W is equal to zero or V and W are orthogonal. So in this case, we'll have an orthogonal basis of eigenvectors. Now, we verify the previous result by finding our eigenvectors concretely, and then we'll show that they're orthogonal. We have distinct eigenvalues. So the first one, lambda one, we're gonna use the plus sign on the square root. And then for the square root, we'll call that D to simplify our notation. To find eigenvectors, we form the null space of A minus lambda one times I. So we have this matrix here. Because we know we have non-zero solutions, the determinant is equal to zero. Now, in the two by two case, if the determinant's equal to zero, we have a trick for finding the null space. I don't have to check the entire matrix. I only need the first row, assuming it's non-zero. Then a solution will be to switch these entries and then multiply the second one we're using by a minus sign. So using this trick, I'll find an eigenvector by just switching these entries and then multiplying this one by a minus one. So we have B, D minus, A minus C over two. Of course, we check that. So if it's an eigenvector for lambda one, then we have to have the A on V1 is equal to lambda one V1. So I'll leave it to you to check. That's just an exercise in bookkeeping. Same procedure for our other eigenvalue. So I have lambda two, we have the minus sign in front of the square root. And again, I'm using D to simplify notation. We form the null space. We get this matrix. We apply our trick for two by two matrices. So we switch and negate. So I get B minus D minus A minus C over two. And then I'll leave it to you to check that A on V2 is equal to lambda two V2. So we have our V1 and our V2 eigenvectors for lambda one and lambda two. We check that they're orthogonal now. So if I take the inner product of V1 and V2, we'll have, okay, both of them start with a B, so I have a B squared. Then we note, observing each term in the second slot, we're gonna have minus a difference of two squares. So I have minus D squared minus A minus C over two squared. Now when we square D, we're just squaring this term here. So the A minus C over two quantity squared is gonna go away. I'm gonna have B squared minus B squared, which is equal to zero. So these two vectors are orthogonal. Now, if we want an orthonormal basis, we have to have unit vectors, which would mean we'd have to find the length of each vector and then divide by that length. Of course here, that's gonna be messy, so we skip that step. Let's run some numbers through our equations. So we'll use the matrix A equal to eight, four, four, two. This is real symmetric. 
we have a equals eight, b equals four, c equals two. So d is equal to five. The eigenvalues are gonna be equal to five plus or minus five, which means we have 10 and zero. Our equation for V1 is, okay, we'll have entries B and D minus A minus C over two. So we'll have four, two. We check that that's an eigenvector. So I'll take A times V1. We're doing this matrix vector product, which gives us 10 times four, two. So four, two is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 10. For V2, we have entries b and minus d minus a minus c over two. That gives us the vector four minus eight. Again, we check. So I'll have a times v2 gives us the zero vector, which is the same as zero times four minus eight. So four minus eight is an eigenvector for eigenvalue zero. Now, we check the orthogonal property. So I take the inner product of v1 and v2, here we're taking the inner product of 4, 2, and 4 minus 8. That gives me 16 minus 16, which is 0. So orthogonal. Now, for the spectral theorem, we want an orthonormal basis. So we'll just take each of our vectors, divide by their lengths. So we want to make unit vectors. So for u1, we'll take v1, divide by its length, which is square root of 20. For u2, we take v2, divide by its length, which is square root of 80. Here, I want a nice matrix at the end, so we're gonna clean up all our numbers. When I do that, u1 will be equal to two over square root of five, one over square root of five. You sum the squares of the entries, we get four fifths plus one fifth, so it's a unit vector. Okay, that's a one. For u2, we'll have one over square root of five minus two over square root of five. And again, we'll have a one fifth plus four fifths is equal to one. So, U1 and U2 are gonna give me our orthonormal basis. Now, for the next step, we wanna find the matrix P that puts our A in diagonal form. So to get that, we're gonna load U1 and U2 into our matrix P as the column vectors. Now, when we have this, this is gonna be an orthogonal matrix. So we wanna see that P times P transpose gives us the identity matrix. In this case, P transpose is just equal to P. So I'll leave it to you to do the multiplications here that show that we get the identity. To finish, let's put our matrix in diagonal form. So we'll form P inverse AP and show that we get a diagonal matrix out. Now, P is gonna be the matrix where the columns are our eigenvectors D is gonna be a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. Here, the eigenvectors and eigenvalues go in the same order. So, we'll form P inverse AP. Okay, here we have that P inverse is equal to P transpose, okay, which just happens to be equal to P also. I could pull one over square root of five out of each of these matrices to give us a one fifth out in front, and then these are easier to look at. We multiply these two matrices together, we get 20, 0, 10, 0. Then if I take this product, I wind up with 50, 0, 0, 0. We multiply by 1 fifth, I get 10, 0, 0, 0. And that's just the diagonal matrix with our eigenvalues of 10 and 0 on the diagonal in the same order as our eigenvectors.